Okay, so, so far we can read information from our database. However, there is, uh, we can make this process a little bit easier. That means adding a little bit more code to make future uh, reading from the database a whole lot easier. Okay, so before we begin, I want us to fix the, uh, the nav bar here so that the username is all the way on the other side because this will be used to display the current user who is logged in. But before we do that, let's fix our reading from the database. Let's make it easier. So far, it's, it's okay, but we can improve on it. So the first thing we do is we have this table right here that says uh, users. It seems my uh, sublime text is not working well, so let me close it for a second and open it again. Okay, much better. All right, so this is a fixed value for our table. So we don't want to have a fixed value here because we have many tables that we're going to be using, not just the users table. So we want the process of selecting a table to be automatic. Now, what do I mean? If we go to our models here, because all models will be extending this particular model right here. So which means whatever uh, values we add in this model right here can be accessed from this one right here, as long as we are accessing the instance, the current instance at the time, because it's as good as this is the same as this because it's being extended. So what I want us to do here is, let's come to the constructor here for a second. So uh, let me remove this, okay? Let's remove that fixed value, which means now we can't read from the database using that where table over here. But what I want us to do is to check if the property is set and then we use it. So right here in the constructor, I'm just going to echo out and I'm just going to say var dump like this because var dump shows us the, the data type as well. So I want to ask the question, does the property exist? So if property exists and what's the class name that we want to check? Now we want to check inside this, okay? You could use self, but self is the non-instantiated version of this class but we want to choose that particular instance because these models will be different we'll have a user's model we'll have a uh, a classes model etc etc so we want whatever model is instantiated at that time that's the information we want to get from it now because we don't know what we'll do in the future or what the, the names of the models will be this is why we use the word this, whatever the current version or the current instance is at that time. So hopefully that makes sense. And then we want to check if the property named table exists. So let me just put that there like so. So if we go back here and just refresh the page, you see here we're going to get, okay, undefined property table, right? It doesn't know the table, that's why it can't read. But then we'll see here it says boolean false, meaning that it does not exist. So I expected that because I did delete the property from here. So obviously it does not exist. However, if I go to the users model, right, this one right here, and then I add that property there. So I'm going to say protected table is equal to users like that. Okay. Now, because this is the model that we instantiated in the home uh, thing, this is where we instantiated it from, the property should exist now, even though we are reading it from the main model there. So let's just check it out and refresh. And you see that it says true now, and it can read from the database. Very nice. Now, what this means is that the table, this one, users, it means if I create a different model, let's say model named uh, classes or uh, students maybe, let's say the students model, right? 
and I can just change this table to model here and things will change as well. The table will now be different. So I hope it will make more sense as we start to use this. But before we do this, let me remove that so that it's no longer useful there. And now the property will not exist. Now I want to show a second way we can get uh, because now it doesn't exist. The other option is we want if a model, uh, let's say the name of the model is user, we just want it to know immediately that the table name for this one must be users. Now this won't always be true. This is where we're going to have the option to add the table name directly, but we want it first of all to infer the name and just say, okay, if this model is uh, named user, the table must be users. Okay, so let's let it guess the name using that. So to do this, we're going to ask the question, if the property exists, so in this case, it doesn't. So let's change this to an if statement, like so. So this will return false because the property does not exist. And if that's true, then we're going to create the property. So we're just going to say this table is equal to. So we are creating the property here, but what we equate it to. Now, if you add the class name, let's say this, this model is named model. If I do this, and then I do that, and then I say class like so, this is a special thing in uh, classes for PHP. When you do this, it returns the name of the current class. So what I will do is, let me just do that before we use this. I just want you to see what this will do. So this is the current class right now. I'm going to call it by doing this. I'm going to say echo like that so that we see what value is returned by doing this operation right here. So if I refresh now, you see it writes model. But if I'm going to use model here, it means I already know the class name, right? So if I don't know the class name, I'll just say self like that, okay? So that it describes itself, self class. It should give me exactly the same result. You see that model. Now, if I decide to run this instead, uh, let me save this, go to the users class here. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Let's do it from right here. That side, it's not yet possible. So instead of self, I want to say this, the current instance, like so. Okay, so there we saw model. But if we use this, then we're talking of the current instance. So if I do that now and refresh, you see that it tells me it's the user class we are in right now. So that is good. So what I can do now with this information is that I know the name of the current class that is instantiated. So I'll say this table is equal to, and let me just reduce it string to lower so that I change it to lower case and then put it like this. So string to lower model class. Now, if we were using namespaces, this would uh, return the full namespace and the class name, which can be very handy. So if the property does not exist, let's add it there. If it exists, let's let it be because whenever we're going to call it, we're going to use that. So like this, we make sure that even though we don't supply a property named table, it's going to guess that we want to uh, get the users table, but we need to add that S at the end, string to lower, and then let's add that S at the end like so because otherwise it's going to look for the user table, but it's users. Okay, so good. So for now, we should get a result even though we haven't specified the table. So back here, I will refresh. Okay, so undefined property user table on line 32. So let's see what's going on here. Uh, okay. Where is this model 32, 32, right here. Okay, so it's saying uh, it doesn't know that property. Now, the problem is here I'm checking for if the property exists. So it should check for if it does not exist. So I'll put a exclamation point like so, just to 
negate the whole if statement. So refresh, and there we go. So now base table of view schooldb.models does not exist. Okay, that's because I'm as checking for the model. Let's use this there, like so. Okay, so back here, let's try again, refresh, and there we go. Okay, so now we are able to read from the users table, even though we haven't specified a table. So when we create uh, a model like this, it will guess that we just need to add an S and that's the table name we want to read from. But there will be times when you have a user model, but you want it to read from a uh, student's table. So in that case, you're going to say protected, and then you change that to, let's say, something like students. Okay, so you are free to add this to your model or not. Either way, it's going to figure it out and try to run that query. So if we refresh now, it will tell me that uh, the students table does not exist. That's because it's now getting the information from here. So for now, we're going to remove that like so. And then it will read from the users table. Refresh, and there we go. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Now with this information that we have, we want to make two more functions in the main model because I don't want us to, uh, to struggle when we are inserting data, updating and delete. But before we do that, uh, one more thing we should add here is um, if we go to the home controller, you see that this is one way we are loading our model, but this is a little bit cumbersome. So we can change the way we are doing things here. So for a second here, let me say, uh, let me mute that. So let's do it a bit different. Now, the way we are doing it here is that in the controller, we have this function, load model. So this load model checks if the file exists, loads it, and then it creates a new instance. But what I want us to be able to do is just say something like uh, user is equal to new user, like so. I think this looks uh, much cleaner, less code than this. So how do we make this happen? If I tried to do this right now, it's going to cause an error because it will say class not user not found, okay? But there is a simple fix to this issue. Let me remove this entirely. We don't need it anymore. There's a simple fix. If we go to the auto load here, where we load all our files, what we can do is create a function that will load a file when we need it. So this function is going to be called, uh, there's an inbuilt function called SPL register. Uh, auto load register that's the one right there okay so in here what you do oh sorry it's like this you just run the function like that but you supply a function here a function name but instead of giving a name let's just give it an anonymous function like so so the function will give us the class name so we'll say class underscore name like so okay so class name there Mm -hmm. Now, what happens here is that every time a class that is not found, this function will be evoked. So every time we call it a, uh, a class that we can't find, this function will run. So I can just say echo class name like that. So we can just say uh, was not found like this. So you will see this happen when I try to do this. So if I try to refresh that, you see user was not found. We can just say class like so. User class was not found like that. Okay. Now it's easy to do something about that. First of all, let's change this to a lower string. String to lower like so, so that we change it to a lower case. But the models here are uppercase here, so I think we're going to use UC first. So that we have that naming convention. And then we need to find it inside models. 
So all we need to do is just say include right here. So I'm just going to say or oh, require actually require and this is what we we'll require. First of all, let's put some text here and concatenate. We'll do dot dot slash because it's always in reference to the index page. So private slash uh, models like that slash. And then we have the class name and then we'll have dot PHP on the other side dot PHP like so. So once we require that, then uh, it will be found. So just like that, now we should have everything working fine. So as you can see now, we can load our model just by doing this user is equal to new user. Okay, so, so far, so good. What we need now is a few more functions here, then we can begin the fun part of HTML and stuff. I'll see you in the next video.